Welcome to Power Electronics Education Electronic Book Lecture 1 Introduction This lecture is presented by Dr. Firuzare So finally we can look at the uh, block diagram Here we can see that the power electronic system consists of power converter which actually processes the power and this converter is controlled by this controller so the component, the circuit elements within the power converter consist of capacitors magnetic elements like inductors or transformers and transistors operate in switch mode so basically we don't have lossy components like resistors or linear mode transistors and in the control circuit because the efficiency is not a big issue we have these elements like resistors capacitors and transistors operate in switch mode or linear mode and here basically the output filter depends on the application but normally this one consists of inductor and capacitor and this filter is quite important is line filter and EMI filter in general a power electronic system consists of an input source it can be either current or voltage source and also it can be either DC type or AC and also we have a load it can be in most of application we have resistive inductive load and also semiconductor devices in the power converters so that means if we have power converter inside the power converter we have power switches either control switches diodes or SCR or tyrester and then we have a controller basically consists of analog or digital circuits especially microcontrollers that means by measuring the output voltage and output current and compare with reference signal it can be current or voltage the controller provides the gate signal in order to control the output voltage or current and sometimes this signal is not suitable to turn off or turn on the power switches so that's why we need to have a gate drive system so gate drive circuit is also important in some applications to be able to turn on and turn off the power switches and for protection sometimes we need to have a circuit breaker that means a static switch to be able to turn off the whole system if there is any short circuit if there is any fault and also uh, for protection we need to have different sensors to measure the over current over voltage over temperature and also for quality purpose we need to have filter either line filter input filter or output filter if there is a AC drive system or if there is a motor drive normally we don't need to have a filter output filter in a power converter key elements are power switches the most important power switches in modern power converters are power diodes power MOSFET and IGBT there are some other power switches which were very common in the past such as BGT, power BGT this type of switch has significant switching loss and also some constraint on gate drive so this one is not very common and the next one is silicon control rectifier SCR or tyrister this type of switch has an important role in high power high voltage converters because they can stand at high voltage and they can deliver high current they are also used in low power AC AC converters in which a simple and a cheap converter is required there are two other switches such as GTO and MCT they have a special application in high voltage high power especially in power system which is suitable for renewable energy applications reactive power control and active power filters when we consider power switch 
has an ideal switch that means the switch can handle unlimited current and blocks unlimited voltage so there is no limit on this voltage level or on this current level and the voltage drop across the switch that means when the switch is, is getting on the voltage across the switch is almost zero and the current through the switch is also the leakage current through the switch is almost zero that means when the switch is off the leakage current is also zero so the switch is turned on and off with no rise and fall times so just when we apply gate signal and when we remove the gate signal the switch is turned on and turned on in a very short time so that means the switching time either when the switch is getting on or off or zero so this assumption help us to analyze a power circuit but for design and practical considerations we should consider real power switches so in a real case ideal switches do not exist during switching transients when the switch is off now we apply gate signal at this time and then the switch is getting on so during this time the switch is in on position but this is switching transient so you can see that over this time the voltage across the switch is decreasing while the current through the switch is increasing and because power is voltage times of current so we can multiply voltage and current and get the instantaneous power and here you can see that the switching loss is significant and that's because the voltage across the switch is changing at the same time the current through the switch is changing so we have to know that this issue may create so many problems this is voltage change DVDT if there is any stray capacitance in the system that creates significant leakage current and this is current change that means the IDT and if there is any stray inductance that creates significant over voltage three major issues to design a power electronic system are losses harmonics and electromagnetic interference or EMI these issues affect system cost, size, efficiency and quality so it's a trade-off between these factors so when you're talking about losses basically losses means switching losses, conduction losses and also some other losses associated with the uh, controller and some other losses associated with energy stored in stray components for example if there is any stray inductance or stray capacitance whenever we switch on and off we charge and discharge that means we dissipate power also when we are talking about harmonics that means the quality of output voltage or current is important for example the output ripple total harmonic distortion and harmonic contents and when we are talking about EMI that means high frequency contents of noise which basically generated by DVDT and the IDT and this happens if we have a fast switching that means delta T is decreasing or this term is increasing same happens for DVDT so if there is any significant stray capacitance or stray inductance that means the IDT times of stray inductance creates significant voltage and DVDT times of stray capacitance generates significant current so when we design a power electronic system we have to know we have to understand these factors and we have to optimize the system based on these three factors so integrated power electronic modules means integrating all the um, um, sections like power section 
filter, gate drive, controller and sensors in a package called integrated power electronic modules. So it's very challenging because when we're talking about power converters, we are talking about high voltage, high current, and when we have a gate drive and controller close to the power converter, noise is a big issue and also sensor and filter should be integrated to actually increase the power density. So let's start with sensor. So when you are talking about sensor, it can be over current sensor, over voltage and over temperature and plus a snowball circuit to protect the power switches. When we are talking about controller, that means um, logic device, normally we have microcontroller and A to D or D to A to sample the output voltage or current and also process and also we, we may have analog circuits like op amp or other comparators and then the controller basically send the proper signal at low voltage and this voltage level may not be suitable to turn on the power switches so what we need, we need to have a gate drive circuits and we normally have high side gate drive or low side gate drive and also in some applications we need to have dead time control to protect the system against any short circuit and filter it can be line filter, EMI filter basically consists of capacitors and inductors either common mode or differential mode and for surge protection we have varistor here variable resistor and main part is power which consists of diodes or control switches with different capacitors and inductor based on different topologies. So one of the demands is to actually have integrated power electronic modules and also we like to actually reduce any wiring and we like to integrate everything, increase the power density. So one of the issue to reduce the size of filters is increasing the switching frequency so when we increase the switching frequency, one of the drawback is switching losses. Switching losses increase the temperature. We need to actually transfer the heat from junction to ambient. So packaging is one of the issues that we have to consider. To reduce electromagnetic interference, we need to have planar phosphor because compared to normal wire planar phosphor, this type of interconnection has less strain inductance which can reduce over voltage and protect the system and in power electronics as you can see everything is integrated so we can instead of discrete component we can have a package which includes all the power converters with minimum wiring and when we need to connect the control section to the power section instead of wiring we can use uh, direct connection and in some applications when we need to connect some passive components like inductor or capacitor we can connect through this planar bus bar we can put the switches connect through this bus bar or we can put the capacitor and in this case we can reduce any stray inductance or capacitance so power electronics has an important role in modern technology almost in all electrical systems there is at least one power converter from mobile phone chargers and computer power supplies to industrial motor drives from low power to high power so with advances in semiconductor devices which provide fast switching devices and also microcontrollers with high frequency that means power electronics becomes a main solution in renewable energy systems such as photovoltaic and wind turbines to export green power into power systems with high efficiency and in some industrial applications where we need to synthesize high frequency signal then using fast switching, fast sampling, high speed microcontroller we can generate the desired voltage or current. 
So it's hard to define power levels for power electronic systems. Different topologies may be used at different power ratings. In general, we can classify them into less than 100 watts. Basically, these type of converters are switch mode power supplies for portable equipment and a small motor drive system used in home appliances. Less than 10 kilowatts which basically in power supplies for computers or office equipment and variable speed motor drives used in commercial buildings for example in um, air conditioning systems between 10 kilowatts to 1 megawatts in high power motor drives in industry traction control and renewable energy system and more than 1 megawatt in utility transmission line, grid connected system and reactive power control. Different combinations of power converters are used in several applications. The converters are classified based on input source and load requirements. I have to highlight a key point that normally AC AC converters are not very common in industry. The most important power converters are AC-DC basically based on diode rectifier then we can get DC voltage and then DC-DC which can convert the DC at different voltage level either constant or adjustable or DC-AC especially cascade with AC-DC then we can control the output frequency and magnitude. So these three converters, AC-DC, DC-DC and DC-AC are very common and very important in power electronics. Most power converters have multi-power processors in which the input voltage, which is almost grid voltage, with constant frequency and magnitude, is converted to the DC through this AC-DC converter and then through this DC-DC converter we can get regulated voltage or adjustable DC voltage at this bus bar or through this DC-AC converter we can get adjustable AC voltage with controlling the magnitude and frequency and sometimes we get the uh, DC source from photovoltaic or battery and in this case we need to actually boost the voltage through this DC-DC converter because the point is that this voltage level probably is not suitable for different applications and then we can actually have we can provide either adjustable DC or AC voltage for power supply AC or DC motor drives and power systems. So this is power flow based on input source in different applications. So starting with AC input, so it comes from grid voltage or from generators, either variable or constant frequency or magnitude. So the first application is for high power um, system used as a power supply or basically in motor drive as a DC drive system. So in this case there is only single converter which is basically based on control rectifier. That means in this case we have only one AC-DC converter based on thyristor or SCR which is controlled rectifier and on the input side we have AC and what we get, we get DC across the output and the voltage is controlled by firing angle by changing the switching time and in this case you can see that we can normally use this type of converter for high power power supply and high power DC motor drive. Now let's look at another topology. So in this case we have diode rectifier and what we get if the input is AC so we have one rectifier 
which can convert the AC into DC so basically this is based on diet uncontrolled rectifier where we can get DC from AC and here normally we have a rectifier with the uh, filter suppose we have a capacitor so what we get from here we have unregulated DC voltage with ripple and this voltage is not controlled is not adjustable so it depends on the application if we need the DC for example power supply so through this DC DC converter we can control the DC voltage so one application is to get DC DC voltage to get DC voltage through this DC DC converter and then we can control the output voltage it can be used as a power supply or DC drive system or we can basically control the output voltage or generate AC voltage through this converter that means here we have DC voltage and what's happened here we can control the output voltage so in this case we can have another converter which is DC AC and across the output we can get AC voltage with adjustable frequency and magnitude suitable for AC drive system or in power system where we can export the power from generator into the system or for power system stability